we are live, man. So Ian, thanks so much for coming on. Um, like I was telling you, I'm excited to have you on the podcast and let you share your success uh, thus far. You've been crushing it, PRs left and right, getting back in the in the swing of things. So I'll I'll go ahead and let you kind of take it away and just do a, do a nice little introduction of yourself, man. All right. Uh, from Ohio, um, married my wife. We've been married for what, babe? Uh, seven years. Seven years now. We got three boys. Uh, you know, like uh, I said a little bit earlier, they're uh, six, five, and two. Um, I was a professional uh, mixed martial artist. Um, did uh, five years of that, and then uh, when we were pregnant with our second one, I decided to uh, hang the old gloves up and focus a little bit more on the dad life. Um, and with that came a little bit of laziness and enjoying, uh, you know, the free time that I had and. Uh, the, the freedom of not having to watch my weight. Um, so I kind of got a little out of hand and, uh, you know, I would always try to get back on the wagon, but never got there. And then, uh, you know, one day I was scrolling through Facebook and came across this, caught my, caught my eye and did a little research and, and here I am. <laughs> here you are, man. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a pretty fun journey thus far. So, uh, I remember when we first had that conversation, you know, you're, you're telling me about your MMA days and it's interesting when you think about it, especially when you know, since you've gotten started in the program and you've gotten back into the groove of things, you know, when you're at that level, you know, years ago competing, it was, it was rather easy to show up, put in the work, you know, stay, stay disciplined with your nutrition. Cause obviously you're having to make weight for fights mm -hmm. and different things like that. And then, you know, when you hang, hang up the, hang up the mitts, like you were saying, you know, it's a little, a little bit harder at that point. You don't have that, that accountability anymore. You don't have that pressure to show up and, you know, make weight for a fight or anything else. So, it's kind of easy to let yourself kind of drift off a little bit. So oh, that was sure. uh, how, how long ago was your uh, was your first fight? Oh, my or your, first or your last fight. Last fight. My, I say. Right, my last fight would yep. have been in uh, 2015, January 2015. Okay. Um, so just about uh, over over five years, almost six years now. Okay. Um, uh, like I said, we had my oldest one, and my wife was who'd have been about six months pregnant with the second one. Um, and with my firstborn, um, I mentioned it before in some of my own ups, um, my oldest, and my youngest have a condition, a medical condition. So we were, uh, you know, a lot of preoccupied with that, learning about that condition and how to, uh, you know, uh, deal with, not deal with it, but, you know, how, what signs to look out for when they, when they start to go into their uh, medical crisis and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So that was a lot plus the training plus working. And then, uh, with the second one, the second kid coming along, we were just like, that's going to be a little too much. Cause you know, Terry took a lot of my time. Off. Um, oh, I hate yeah. to say it, but I was, I, I was selfish. I had to be selfish to, you know, oh, succeed. Yeah. Um, so I said, you know, it's time for me to retire. I, I was, um, going to be 30 that summer. And I was like, hey, if I haven't made it, you know, as, as a full-time job by now, it's, it's probably start, you know, weaning off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to face that harsh reality a little bit. And you're like, ah, I got to hang it up. And it's not so bad, you know, it's not so <laughs> bad after it's done, but it, it is a little tough. But yeah, MMA as a pro sport, uh, I've had the, the the pleasure of working with a couple other guys that have made it to the UFC. And it is, it's full-time life. Like it is, it is your job basically at that point. So like everything in life is catered to that. And, throw kids into the mix, you know, unless you are, you know, making a full-time living out of it, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult. You really don't see that too often guys that are you know, at that level. I mean, that's, that's pretty much their job at that point. So, but uh, let's, let's talk about your career a little bit, man. You got, you got the, uh, the nickname Redline. So. Yeah. So uh, my brother actually gave me that. It was after my second amateur fight. Um, he said I was redlining it because my pace was just so high and I just kept that pace through every round. Uh, he's like you. You couldn't go any. You couldn't go at a higher pace. So you're just redlining it the whole time. Uh, that that's kind of what my trait was. Uh, you know, through high school, my wrestling, through college, my wrestling was. I might not have been, uh, you know, the most athletic or the most talented, but my my pace and my grind. When it got to the third period, if you weren't smoking me, I was going to beat you. Yeah. Just because I'd, I'd outwork them. I love um, it. So, I love so my brother called me that. It stuck with me. I liked it. So. Here you go. You got to roll with it, man. I That's love right. It. I love you don't get school. to pick your own nicknames. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, so high school wrestling, is that is that what got you into MMA like after high school or what what got you to start fighting? So it was college, you know, uh, college wrestling. We'd all hang out. You know, we'd always watch the fights and I've always been intrigued. I'm the youngest out of four kids. I have two older brothers. So, you know, I've been in my fair share of fights. Yeah. Uh, most of them on the, uh, the bad side of things with the two older brothers. But uh I've always been interested in it, uh, not necessarily uh, because I wanted to get punched in the face, but, you know, I like a challenge. And, yeah. uh, you know, after college wrestling, you know, there really isn't that next step. And I definitely wasn't, uh, you know, at that caliber to go to, a, you know, the Olympics or anything. So uh, logically, the next step was to 
punch people in the face for fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And where, where did you wrestle at in college? So I wrestled at Heidelberg University, uh, yeah. Division Three school in Ohio. Awesome. Um, had a pretty good career there. I had uh, 87 career wins, and I was nationally ranked twice. That's big time. In college, it's big time. Some yeah. some people don't even get that many wins in high school, man. But <laughs> And I'm sure you can agree. You know, wrestling was actually my favorite sport. However, I was just better at football, and so and, – and I was kind of through with cutting weight because um, I cut weight pretty pretty hardcore in high school, probably a little bit too much, which – really kind of was my downside with that. But man, if I could go back, I would probably go into wrestling, but obviously wrestling teaches us a lot of, you know, powerful lessons in life. That's one of the reasons I love it so much. I love working with guys that have wrestled in the past because like you mentioned, you're just a grinder, you're a worker. It's just like, all I need to do is tell you what to do and you're just going to put your head down and, and do it. And um, you know, that's, that's really what it takes at the end of the day. I mean, you got to put in that work and you got to have that, that grind mentality uh, side of things. And I think that crosses over to, your professional life too, which I definitely want to get into that. Um, you've been, you've been having a great year with that as well. Um, but one other, one other thing I wanted to hit on that you mentioned is you got two older brothers and obviously they were, they, they probably beat you down quite a bit. Um, with oh, yeah. impacts, that's like a blessing in disguise. It, it like molds you and shapes you, you know, and, and, it, and it turns you into the man that you're in today. Um, and I kind of went through that similar, uh, transition, uh, with wrestling. And I had these two old, the, they were older than me. They were brothers and they just used to beat the shit out of me. Like when I was a little freshman, I just didn't have the confidence. I had the athletic skills, but man, they just beat, beat, they beat the confidence into me. And so I, I know how that goes. It, it, it definitely brings you up fast, man. So yeah, it sucks at the time. time. You know, looking back, looking back, you're like, man, that, that did a lot for me, you know? Yeah. 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 So you did the MMA then. You, so you had an old, you had two, well, one on the way, you had one, and then another one on the way, and then you made the transition. So talk about that. Like, what happened? Hung the mitts up, called it good with the fighting. Talk about that transition, like, into dad life, man. Like, full-time dad life, I guess. Right. So, like, uh, when I hung it up, you know, I, I you know, it, it's, you can you can hang the gloves up, but you, you can't take the fighter out of the guy. So, like, I would still periodically go back to the gym. Um, but after I stopped going, uh, kind of uh, the, the the crowd that was that was going just kind of, I don't want to say it fell apart, but it was a lot of college kids and, you know, summer came and some graduated. So that core group of people wasn't there and there wasn't that next generation coming up. So I, I kind of slowly faded out of that and spent more time at home. And, um, you know, I just got a little bit more lethargic with workouts because, you know, we had we had a kid um, who was, I think, at that time, one and a half. And then, you know, we had a, a newborn, um, which takes up a lot of your time. Uh, so I, I, I enjoyed it because um, I had a lot more free time. A lot more time to spend with my wife, a lot more time to spend with my kids and, you know, actually enjoy life and, and spend time with them. Um, it's just the, the biggest regret I had was I, I, I got lackadaisical and, you know, let myself go because I was enjoying it too much. Yeah. Yeah. So what what happened specifically? Like you obviously fell out of fight shape, but did you gain a did you gain a bunch of weight or like what happened? Specifically? So <laughs> believe it or not, my last fight, I was at 155 pounds. OK. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, I walked around about 180. Um and then I got up to about 220. And then um, about three years ago, one of my old uh, college buddies was the head wrestling coach in uh, the town I live in. Um, and he asked me to be his assistant. So I got back into that for two seasons. And uh, I got down to 200 pounds. Um, and then uh, he left. So I stopped coaching. And then I put on another 30 pounds. I got up to 230 when I started with you. Wow. And what, what were you trying at that point? Were, were you trying to work out on your own or – yeah, I, I, have my, I got my makeshift uh, gym out in the garage there. And, you know, I do the basics, chest, squat, curls, you know, things like that. Um, like you say, you know, I was just going out there and checking boxes. No, no enthusiasm to them. It's just, yeah, I went out and I worked out. Uh, that should be good. Right. Wasn't strict on my diet at all. We, we, ate, out, we ate out a lot. Um, so, I mean, if you want to call that a workout, you could, but I wouldn't count it as a workout. It was just me throwing some stuff around saying, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't anything that was doing any good for me whatsoever. Yeah. The, the main thing the the issue was, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a plan. There was no planning out there. It was just going out there doing what I felt like doing. Uh, there was no rhyme or reason to it. It was just like, like I said, man, just throwing some weights around and calling it good. Yeah. Just going out there and just hodgepodge. Uh, I think I'll do this today or. I'll definitely hit the arms today again, right? Yeah. It's like hit the there, arm, there was hard, hardly any leg days, hardly any <laughs> leg days in there. Leg day, what's that? 
<laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, you know what's funny about that is, uh, and I've had multiple conversations. It's like, well, I don't play sports anymore, so I don't need to train legs anymore. You know, it's like, that's like one of the biggest mistakes you can make. I mean, you don't have to put all the weight on the bar and try to squat, you know, your, your lifetime PR or anything like that. But yeah, you definitely got to train legs. Speaking of which, I think one of the biggest problems you got right now is you're running out of weight. Like you've ran out of weight. Like literally you, you put all the weight that you have in your garage on the bar, deadlifted it. And you're like, well, shit, maybe instead of a one rep max, you just go 10 rep max, right? Yeah. I guess that's the next step, right? I, I need to start looking, uh, looking at some of the uh, online places and see uh, yep. who's got some weights in stock and who doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Christmas is coming up and, uh, yeah, uh, definitely want to go check those sites, man. Uh, For sure. I, I want to say, well, my typical go-to is usually Rogue, but Rogue's like been out of equipment like mm-hmm. all year for obvious reasons. But yeah, hopefully you can you can find something out there, man. I was yeah. I was able to finally snag some kettlebells. I was pretty happy about that. I was yes, I was surprised about that. I, I got a I ordered a kettlebell, gosh, a couple weeks ago for when we did that five day challenge in Dad by the Dat League group. I went on to Rogue and I was like, please have kettlebell, and it was like easy. Walked yeah. in there, and everything was in stock, and I was really surprised. But with Christmas I coming they, up, I think the next couple of weeks is going to be crazy. Yeah, I so. think they were hoarding them for the Christmas. That way, they I could bet, make I bet. sure they had it all. You never know. You never know, man. So, well, cool. So, obviously, got back into the mix. Um, what What was the big change for you? Like, obviously, we got a plan laid out for you, but what do you feel it was that that really helped help you make a transition and get back on the good path here? I mean, obviously, the plan was the biggest thing. Uh, I've, I've never been good at setting my own uh, plans for training. I've, I've always just had my coaches do it. Um, so having a plan set by you was the biggest help. Um, and then having people holding me accountable. I mean, we can all lie to ourselves saying, yeah, I went out and did it or one day off wouldn't be bad. But having people holding you accountable, uh, you know, really helps you out um, with that as well. Um, those would probably be the two biggest things. And with with that, I think uh, what what really – what really changed for me the most is getting back into that that killer mindset of not just going out there and throwing the weights, but going out there with a purpose, going out there with, you know, hey, I did this much weight a month ago. I want to do more than that. Um, and actually going out there and putting in the work and getting better. Yep. Yep. Instead of just checking the boxes and again, like we were saying, go out, do some do some arm curls and, you know, some abs, maybe no lower body. We don't need that. right? <laughs> yeah, of course not. Yeah, and it's really having a uh, a method to the madness behind it. And when you throw performance in the mix, I mean, it just changes the game. It really does. It changes your mindset, and you show up with in with intent, with purpose, and you know, obviously, that helps everything out. So, what what have the the biggest wins for you been thus far? Biggest wins have been just my strength going up. Um, I've never really considered myself to be a strong guy. Um, when it came to training, and I had to finally like cut weight, I would cut all lifting out of the equation because I would just focus on the weight cut. Um, even in the off season or in between fights, when I'm, when I was lifting, it was never really anything about getting stronger. It was more just about trying to maintain um, and not bulk up and get bigger. So the strengths is the biggest thing that I think uh, I've, I've gotten my wins. Um, like you said, I've been PR and left and right. Um, my legs are the most PRs because I I've never really focused on those. So this uh, Trident challenge uh, yep. was actually, I've, I've never been so, uh, scared yet enthusiastic about going out there and pushing myself yeah, yeah. on some of this stuff. Yeah. 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 That, that retest day, like it's been a while since I was like anxious the night before for a training session. Cause I was like, ah, oh, shit, we got to retest tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep that night, but Hey, that's the, that's the exciting part about just training. And as a whole, like a lot of guys, they don't have any fire whatsoever with their training. So it's like you show up and you just kind of check the boxes and Hey, I got it done. I got a good sweat in, but did you get better? Like, are you getting yourself better over time? Right. So, all right. Right. Um, and actually I was actually looking forward to the retest day because I did it on a Saturday mm-hmm. and Michigan football sucks this year. So instead of watching them get their butts kicked, I went out into the training challenge. I don't know. I don't know who's worse, Michigan or Nebraska. It's, it's interesting. Both those, you know, obviously both those schools have a lot of tradition and man, Nebraska is really tanking. They've been well, tanking. I don't it's, know what it's, it's, can we just put asterisks on 2020 and start it over? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure they'll do that. So, but yeah, it's it's obviously been a very interesting year. Now that you mentioned, it, I mean, you came on board. We've been going through this pandemic. You know, obviously, a lot of people have been getting thrown way off track. Routines are getting all mixed up. Kids are constantly at home. There's no school. So, how have you been able to push yourself through the pandemic and you know keep things together and you know achieve these results that we've gotten thus far, man? All right. Well, uh, like you and I were talking about beforehand, you know, my kids go to bed at seven every night. So mm-hmm. seven thirty, 
I'm out in the garage uh, getting my workout on. Um, I would love to work out in the morning and I've tried for years to do it. I am just not a morning person. Uh, and especially now with winter and, you know, we got the four to six inches of snow. Yep. My garage is not insulated. So yep. me going out there in the morning is probably not the best thing. I'd be pulling muscles left and right without getting. Yep. 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 But yeah, just, sticking, just sticking to that schedule of, uh, you know, after the boys get to bed, uh, don't make the mistake of sitting on the couch and couch monsters yep. will get you every time. <laughs> what do we got here? Copy. Ooh, there you go. That's not coffee. <laughs> That's chocolate and milk. They tricked me. <laughs> hey, can you shut that door, please? Crazies. Oh, that is. is that your oldest? Yep, that's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Mini. Funny. So, Kindergarten? She is first grade. Great. Yeah, so. Oh, and then the other one's knocking on the door, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, in there. oh, gosh. <laughs> Hello. We got all the crazies in here. So we were saying, I think we were talking about early morning workouts. How, And that's the thing is if, if, if you're being realistic with yourself and you're like, you know what, I'm just never going to train early in the morning. You still got to get it done at some point. So having that discipline to do it later in the evening, 730, I'm sure that's not easy. Hey, give me that. Men, men you guys got to get out. Daddy's on an interview. <laughs> Can you shut that door, please, man? Crazy. I feel for uh, you. Oh, feel yeah. For you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and I still got to gotta figure out how to lock my uh, my office door there. It's easy to just slide <laughs> over. There's, like, no lock on it right now. So, But either way, um, so, yeah, getting the workouts in late at night. I mean, obviously, I'm sure there's some days where you're just like, I'd much rather, you know, kick my feet up and just chill. Yeah, there, there definitely have been. I will say, though, that uh, past uh, couple weeks, um, really haven't had that issue. Here, stop messing with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working out at night's always been kind of easier for me. Um, back when I was training, uh, you know, I worked a full eight, ten hour day uh, back when I was installing roofs. Yep, um, yep. And I, I'd get off the roof and I'd go straight to the gym to throw the weights around, run. And at seven o'clock, it was in the ring, sparring and training. And I want to get home till nine o'clock. Yep. Uh, so I'm just kind of used to that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, add in the, the cold weather, obviously you're not going to, like you already mentioned, you're not, you're not going to be getting up early in the morning no. to work out in a garage. That's probably like minus, you know, two degrees, but right. so getting it, getting it done in the evenings. I mean, obviously it's, it's difficult after a long day at work. And you mentioned, um, you know, with your, with your business, with your, that's, that's another thing that I wanted to mention and hit on. Cause I know you've, you've ex experienced a big win there in, uh, I mean, you've had one of the best years you've ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's actually been a, just a big win in general. Uh, right about what time when I started with you, I think shortly thereafter, um, I was actually promoted to uh, the sales manager position. Yep. Uh, so not only was I selling myself trying to get through the pandemic, I'm also managing yep. uh, my team and getting us through the pandemic. And, uh, you know, yep. we had a goal for to hit 7 million um, and we sold six. So considering nice. the year, I'm counting that up as a win. Uh, yeah. Big time in my book. Absolutely. And you got to, I mean, in the, in the game of sales marketing, you got to show up with confidence, you know, because people always know if you don't have that confidence, if, if you don't have that certainty in what it is that you're doing, people know, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, managing, know yeah. Managing people on top of that too. Like, you know, I mean, you got to be a leader leader in all all facets man so mm -hmm. well, like dan gable said after wrestling everything else in life is easy yep absolutely <laughs> that is absolutely correct uh, actually i'll say uh until you have three three daughters <laughs> yeah you might be on to something or there three boys, or three boys right <laughs> no man it's, it's it's been great having you in so far and man we're just we're really just getting started so we've we've we hit what where are we about the eight month mark i i don't even know it's just going by it's been fun. Yep. Time flies when you're having yep. fun, right? Yep. 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 We're finishing out the year with our zero pound challenge. And that's something that you mentioned is, uh, you know, you got one thing left to tick off as far as uh, the essential levels go with with uh, hunter level, right? Or warrior. No hunter. Uh, hunter, yeah. Yep. Yep. Just, just got to get hunter. that body composition. Yeah. Yeah. Body and and uh, unfortunately, uh, I got a big dose of reality last night. I thought I was in the low 20s. Uh, my my wife, I had her go out and buy, uh, you know, the Walmart uh, calibers. Hey, man. And, uh, Thanks. She's an athletic trainer. So she did the uh, caliber test on me. 
and whew, a lot higher than what I thought. I'm I'm about really? twenty. Yeah, I'm about twenty nine percent, which threw me for a no little. No way, while. dude. From the pictures, hey, no way, no way. That's what I thought too. You know, I've I've cut weight my whole life. I, I yeah. usually have a pretty good indication, but hey, numbers don't lie. So I got my work cut out. Just got to buckle down, get her done. There you are. I can hear you. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I was just gonna say. Outside of that, like anything else that you want to end off end off with? Any any big personal breakthroughs that you want to share, man? Um, well, I, I think the biggest breakthrough I have is you know with uh, my mentality of getting that excitement back. You know, get home from work and after a long day of work and dealing with kids that are super rowdy and been cooped up all day and still have that excitement of going to go get a workout in. Um, I, I think that's the biggest breakthrough is I don't have that mindset of ah, I'm tired. Ugh, I don't want to do this. I don't yeah. dread it anymore. I look forward to it. It's it's exciting. Uh, like today, I, I haven't done my workout yet today. I knew I was going to do this with you. And then after this, we have our coaching call. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to get it, get my workout in until till after the coaching call. But yeah. uh, you're sure as hell, I'm going to get it in and get it done. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like you said, getting that killer mindset back into play is like one. But then surrounding yourself around you know liking, like-minded individuals. I mean, you go live every week. You do your own up. And you don't want to be the guy that, does his own up and say, you know what? I, I kind of didn't get anything done today. Men. Right. Right. Stop messing around. Um, but uh, now the other thing I was going to mention with that, I got a sidetrack, obviously, but um, <laughs> yeah, I lost track. So I will say oh, this, uh, drinking, drinking this gallon of water. Whew. It it's forces been a while you to, I've done that. It forces you to really spread things out. You can't you can't afford to forget to drink water, right? So oh, yeah. the the big thing about it is just getting you into that 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 uh, routine of just drinking water consistently throughout the day. Because I know I'll get busy and I'll go like three hours without drinking anything, you know, or mm -hmm. all I drank in that time was like half a cup of co coffee, you know. So it really forces you to. Uh, you know, stay on track with the, with the hydration. And cause if you end up at the end of the day and you're like, shit, I got like half a gallon to drink, probably not yeah. going to make it, you know, no, so not, you're going to be up all night, you're gonna be up all night um, having to pee. So, but um, no, man, it's, it's been great to see you get back into the groove. And like I mentioned uh, with, with other guys in this group, it's, you know, when you show up, you do the work, you just put your head down. I mean, you become a leader amongst, you know, the, the brotherhood and everybody, you know, we, we kind of work off of each other. So when you see another guy putting in the work, especially after a long day of, you know, dealing with your job and then you come home, kids are crazy and you're putting out fires left and right. The last thing a lot of guys want to do is, is work out. But I, this is what I was going to ask you, like at the end of the day, man, like having a plane of attack is one thing, but what do you think the other thing is that really gets you into that garage to, to do your workouts? Like, you know, I know we talk about it, the truth, the MVP for you, like what's your big why, man? Uh, the big why is, you know, I'm, I'm a competitor um, and I like to compete and being in the forest father and seeing all these other guys, uh, you know, I got a particular guy on my radar who I see as that runner right in front of me and I got to, I got to pass him. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the why is, you know, to get back in that competitive spirit and uh, better myself uh, is, is basically the, the biggest one, you know, and it's also setting an example for my kids because my kids are even like, Hey, are you going to go work out? Yeah, I'm going to go in the garage. Can I come out with you? Uh, well, you need to get a little bit older. Maybe, maybe on yeah. the weekend we can we can do something together. Yep. But yep. yeah, no, that's awesome. Getting them involved. Yeah, the workouts aren't too productive when you do, but it's it's cool to get them involved and have them experience. But that's something that I look forward to. It'll be a little bit different with girls, but hey, who knows? But yeah, once your boys get older, that'll be cool to have them in there. You know, training with you and you know going through that and. I look oh, forward yeah. to getting my girls in there when they're a little bit serious. Now they just, they might do a set or two and then it's, you know, off to the next thing, Jack around time, you know? So, but Absolutely. Um, if you haven't noticed how much Jack around they do. So <laughs> I mean, that looks normal to me. I mean, they actually look yeah, normal yeah. compared to my boys. Normal, that's normal. just another day in the life. Right. And that's, that's what I hear with boys. I mean, you probably would have had a, a, a full on, you know, backyard brawl if they, if they showed up. Right. So oh, yeah, they're, they're usually pretty good. They're usually pretty good. They'll, they'll scream and yell at each other and, you know, fight over the Barbies and whatnot. So right. fun times, man, fun times. It's, it's <laughs> joy and, um, you know, the, the special side of things, man. So, but, uh, no, man, other than that, Ian, thank you so much for coming on. It was, it was fun, you know, hearing about your journey. And like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to what's ahead here and what the new year brings, man. So let's keep Absolutely. putting in the work, which I know you'll do. And, being the uncommon man. 
Well, hey, I appreciate you having me on, Travis. Absolutely, brother. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Go, <laughs> so, cool, brother. Thanks for coming oh. on, bro. See you soon. Have, have a good night. All right, man.